All right, so you kind of, uh, you started the Penny Hoarder after being in debt. Uh, you were in school. What were you actually going to school for? What did you want to do before the Penny Hoarder? Oh, I, I was going to school for political science. Okay. Um, I don't know if, you ever, if you've ever seen West Wing, but I wanted to be Josh. Okay. I, that was, uh, that, I thought that was the coolest job in the world. And I dropped out my first semester because right. I got a job working for the AFL-CIO, knocking on doors mm -hmm. uh, in the 2004 election, and I, I was hooked. Yeah. And um, uh, I said goodbye to school, mom and dad cried a little, <laughs> and um, I worked on campaign for the next uh, six, seven years. And then having such like a tie to politics, and that's what you wanted to do, do you yeah. still have that kind of tie in the community? Um, I still follow it pretty darn closely. Yeah. I'm not involved now, only because... Okay. It's hard to, hard, to be. hard to be a CEO yeah, and, and really understand. active in it, um, but I'd like to again yeah. someday. I worked in politics, so I know I know how crazy that it's is. It's all encompassing. Yeah. Um, all right. So the penny hoarder it, it gives a lot of personal finance advice to people. Um, if someone was struggling with their finances, do you have like one piece of advice you you would just nail home for every person? Well, I think that's the thing about personal finance is there's no one size yeah. fits all advice. But I'll tell you in my experience, what I was doing, one of the things I was doing wrong. Um, I had $50,000 in student loan and credit card debt, and I was making about $30,000 a year. That math does not add up. There was no way I was ever going to pay that, that off. And, but I was so focused on frugality. I was so focused on, like, what can I cut? Like, I didn't have anything. Um, and um, I wish, and, I, and what finally worked for me, was cutting back is important, making sure you're not overspending, but also spending some of my time thinking about how I could bring in a couple extra bucks. There's okay. two sides of the ledger, and I think you have to give equal attention to both. So having such a frugal lifestyle and now, you know, being very successful, yeah. what what's kind of changed for you in your personal life? Like, how, how has that affected you as a person? I mean, it's changed a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate now not to have to yeah. to worry about that as much. Um, I still have finance worries, but now they're more about a, a, company, a company and not, not mine. I mean, just starting starting out that first, first year, even though we were doing well and we were profitable, uh, managing the cash flow was tough. And I remember weeks, like, wondering if we were going to make payroll and that, that that is scary so that's something that never goes away the challenges have just owning morphed. a business yeah and uh, so something that you talked about in there that I thought was pretty awesome is that you still use Ibotta so it's kind of like uh, things that you learned while being frugal you still implement in your life even though now you probably don't have to yeah absolutely that stuff's never going to leave um, I you know I don't I don't think about it as much now if I'm like at a nice dinner, but yeah. I'm never going to leave free money on the table. That's <laughs> totally fair. Yeah. Um, so you didn't have a writing experience before the Penny Hoarder, but you started all of the blogs? I, I was a pretty terrible writer, to be yeah. honest with you. Uh, but everybody is a writer, and um, I think what worked is even though it was riddled with spelling errors and punctuation errors, um, but I was just speaking from the heart. And I was I was being really honest about what I had what I had done to get myself in so much debt, and I think that was enough for people. To yeah, it kind of touched people; they could relate. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you look for now in the writing when you guys are hiring writers? Well, the most important thing um, for us is a good pitch, but we also look at our writer's portfolio. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, for us, it's not so much important where you've been published, but we want to see what the quality of writing is somewhere else. So we always tell new writers, like, if you don't have a portfolio yet, yeah. just write something, something and put it, publish it on a free blog, uh, you know, like a WordPress or um, so that we can see it. And then uh, you guys do a lot of personal stories. So you're talking about not running out of content because there's so many people and everyone has a story. Where do you find those stories? Where do you find those people? I mean, many of them come from our readers. So um, we have a Facebook group, for example, which is a place where people share how they're saving and, and making extra money. And oftentimes somebody will post something really interesting in there and we're like, we got to do a story on that. Okay, so you contact these people in your Facebook group and ask if they, if they want a story done? Exactly. That's awesome. All right, well, I think that's all I got. Do you have any questions? Um, what are some of your favorite media companies? Uh, favorite media companies? Well, I love the New York Times. <laughs> I love the Washington Post. Actually, the Post is probably my favorite yeah. right now because their political reporting has mm -hmm. been absolutely incredible this last yeah. year. Okay. So you're a big fan of political stuff, obviously, because you come from it. Yeah, absolutely. What, uh, That'll never go away. What kind of music do you listen to? Um, I listen to a lot of different kinds of music. Um, I love musicals, to be honest with you. Yeah, I was, musicals. Yeah, I was in New York uh, last cool. week to, and I saw Dear Evan Hansen, which was pretty incredible. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Have you ever had any investors or thought about bringing in like, any kind of funding to grow or like, expedite growth? Yeah, no, thankfully not. Um, uh, I, I think investing is, uh, bringing on investments is a really great way to hype, get some hyper growth, but yeah. for me, it was. Uh, 
it's not the right strategy. I, no. I never want it to be um, beholden to an investor. And when you bring an investor on too, they're looking for an exit. They want to see their money back five, six, seven years down the road. Right. And because I want to do this forever, it just didn't make sense. I'd rather grow a little slower. Right. Cool. So you uh, you admitted that you like Monopoly, and you're the, probably yeah. the first person I've ever heard say that out loud. I know. I What's know. the deal? Can I tell you? Uh, when I was a kid, I used to play Monopoly tournaments. Like that's how into it I was. Um, okay. Total nerd. Um, I love board games. All I mean, any any board game, I am down to play. And so, the, but the idea of being in it for three to four hours, I'm probably one of the. You also like Risk. Love Risk. Yes, love <laughs> Risk. All right. Who doesn't love a good six-hour six <laughs> board game? Where somebody is bound to flip it. Yeah. <laughs>